Hey guys, welcome back to episode 16 of the Pity to Purpose podcast. Here I want to help you strengthen your relationship with God to position yourself for your greater life purpose and to thrive in all that God has created you to do and be. I'm your host, Parker Seymour, and in this new week's episode, I'm going to be briefly teaching you guys about the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, what they are, why they are for today, and how we can receive them. Now, I do understand that there's a lot of confusion around some of these gifts, so I fully intend on clearing up uh, some of that confusion so that you can have a better picture on what the Word of God is actually saying. I won't be able to go into too much detail with some of these things, so definitely be sure to dive deeper with God and learn more about them and understand what all of this would look like in your own life. Like I do mention a lot here, God wants to do great things in our lives, but what he wants is willing vessels that will allow him to pour these things into. So that we need to be sure that we approach God from a place of humility so that we can be sure that we are fully hearing what he wants to speak to us in this episode. Now with all of that, let's go ahead and first read and discuss 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul is speaking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, starting in verse 4, let's read up to verse 11, and then we'll discuss. So, starting off, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between Spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still an other the interpretation of tongues. Now, all of, all of these are the work of one in the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So starting off with verses 4 through 6, here we have Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, and he is saying that it is the same spirit of God that distributes through us the ability to carry out different kinds of gifts, services, and work. And before we discuss these gifts, it's important to recognize that the scripture tells us it is the Holy Spirit who ultimately manifests these gifts through us. And as people personally, we cannot receive the glory because it is not by our works, but the Spirit within us. We're just a willing vessel. So the following verses from 7 to 11, Paul briefly explains what these gifts are. So the first gift was words of knowledge, which is a supernatural ability to know what God is currently doing or intends to do in the life of another person. The second one was words of wisdom, which is the divine answer or solution to it for a specific situation. The third gift was faith which you can look at as the ability to trust God with a level of confidence or certainty that is beyond that of other believers. The fourth gift was the gift of healing. And those whom the Holy Spirit manifests this gift through are are empowered to heal a specific ailment supernaturally, oftentimes immediately. The fifth one, miraculous powers or performing miracles. Examples could include raising the dead or causing the blind to see or the deaf to hear or the lame to walk. We've all seen these uh, examples of these in scripture. Now the sixth one was prophecy or to speak forth or declare the divine will of God to interpret the purpose of God or to make known in any way the truth of God which is designed to encourage and uplift the lives of others. And not tear them down. The seventh spiritual gift that was mentioned is distinguishing between spirits. Or you could say spiritual discernment. It's also very important to remember 
that we use this in a way of encouragement and again, not tearing down other people. And the eighth gift is speaking in tongues, or which is also known as a prayer language. This gift allows you to speak or pray in an unknown language, which is designed to edify oneself who has the gift. Now, I do want to say that this gift is real, and it's not weird or it's not freaky. Paul says in the first part of 1 Corinthians 14, 5, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. And there's more to that verse you would need to know, so be sure to check that out in its fuller context later. And in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, Paul puts this plan. He said, for you, for if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you'll be speaking only to God, since people won't be able to understand you. You will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, which it will be all mysterious. So when we hear about these gifts, I encourage you not to be afraid because it is something that God wants us all to have. And the last gift Paul mentioned was the interpretation of tongues, which is just the ability to interpret what someone is saying who is speaking in tongues. Now, it is important to remember with the gift of tongues, not to use it in a way that could cause confusion amongst other believers. That's why tongues and the, and the interpretation of tongues go hand in hand, because it is important to have an interpretation in order for it to be used or stewarded properly among other believers. So those are some of the spiritual gifts mentioned throughout scripture. And now when we look at these, one of the things they have in common is they're all meant to encourage and build up the body of believers, which will lead into the next topic of discussion of why these gifts are for today. There are several different reasons that we can look at to understand why exactly God gives us these gifts. The first one is to manifest God's kingdom in the earth. Remember Matthew 6.10, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And number two, to remind us of our dependence on one another. God created us for relationships and to thrive in them. He uses relationships to bring breakthrough into our lives. Think of some of the greatest breakthroughs you've ever received in life. And then think about how many of those happened because of a specific relationship or community that you had. And number three, to build unity in the church. The Holy Spirit distributes these gifts to each member of the body that he sees fit. And all of these gifts work together like each member of our human bodies work together. And number four, to reveal God to unbelievers. And as, as us believers, exercising these gifts allows unbelievers to have face-to-face -face encounters with the living God. How exciting. And number five, to bring glory to God. We have to remember ultimately that this is all for God. Everything we do in our relationships with God is ultimately for Him, and He is due all the glory. So those are just some of the reasons why spiritual gifts are for today. Next, we're going to look at how we can receive some of these gifts. So in order to receive these gifts, we first must have the Holy Spirit. Like what Peter mentioned in Acts 2, to, uh, Acts 2, 38, he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is where some of you might start asking yourself, well, I have the Holy Spirit, but I can't pray in tongues or heal people or prophesy. Now, there's a few things with that we do have to look at. Now, one of them being is that it's important to remember that at which the level we operate in some of these gifts, like words of knowledge or wisdom or even prophecy, they are results of how close we are in our walks with God. This is why intimacy with God is so important. Some of these gifts of the Spirit come through being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and we must first recognize the two different types of baptism in Scripture. Most of us already know what the water baptism is, so I'm not going to get too much into detail on that. 
But what I want to focus on is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit to help us spread the gospel at a greater effect and capacity. And you can basically look at it as a software update for our relationships with God. Now Acts 2, 1 through 4 says, When the day of the Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly they came, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were all sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to, began to speak in another tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the power or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit just fell upon them and they received it. This is a gift that we just have to ask God for. Now, yes, there are a lot of different variations we can look at, but ultimately this is where you have to do your own searching with your own personal walk with God. Because based from personal experience, this is where God had to take me on my own personal journey to experience the deeper realms of these gifts. And another important thought to keep in mind is that our mindsets can and will block God's blessings in our lives. One of my great brothers in Christ put it simply to me this one, one time. He said, Spiritual gifts are just like Christmas gifts. Everyone around you is opening up and enjoying their gifts, but you're sitting there mad at everyone else instead of opening up yours. We've all been given the gifts. We just have to open them to fully receive them. So we can see that humility before God is always a necessity before we can go deeper with Him. That's why I always talk about the importance of humility here on this podcast because for us as Christians to walk further in our kingdom purposes we need humility so in conclusion we have to remember that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are real and yes they still do exist today for the uplifting and encouragement of other people around us and like I did mention earlier this is one of those topics that you will have to spend your own personal time on so that you can learn more on these and grow with God in all of these areas. And I can teach you about these things and plant different seeds, but ultimately this is where you will have to ask God to take you on your own journey to experience the deeper realm, realm of the Spirit. And with that, if this message speaks to you, I want to invite you this week to dive deeper in intimacy with your relationship with God so that he can take you on a deeper journey to experience more in your walk with him. So my mission with this podcast is to activate fellow believers and help them refine their walks with God to position them in a place ready to thrive in their kingdom purposes. If you feel like the information I shared with you today benefited you in some way, definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already. So that is all I have for you in this week's episode. If you're listening in or you're watching here on YouTube, thank you for tuning in with me. Again, I am your host, Parker Seymour, and we will see you guys next time in the next Pity to Purpose episode.